Hello class, my name is Dale Deardorff and I'm your facilitator and instructor for MSC 608B. This week's lecture, the week six lecture, is going to be on people termination. This is going to be probably one of the toughest, toughest lectures that we're going to have to go through. And the reason for it is not because of the complexity of the process. It's not going to be the complexity or the how hard it is from a material standpoint to get through. It's because we're talking about terminating people and the emotional content, the the I'll call it the process of that and how important it is to do it right versus the impact of doing it wrong. And there are serious consequences if we don't do this correctly. So the first thing I want to do is I want to point out the text that I think or the book that I think is probably going to be one of the easiest and best, uh, I'll call it accompanying type of uh, journals or, or small books for you, and it's called Letting People Go. It's the people-centered approach to firing and laying off employees by Schlossberg. Um, Matt has put together a really, really good, I'll, I'll call it first glimpse at what it takes to terminate people. And we'll talk about the variety of different ways. It's a short read, so it's not a real big read, but it is very powerful. Now, one of the other things I would tell you is, in addition to this, you're going to need to go to your HR department, if you don't have an HR department and you are the HR department when it comes to terminating people, you need to go to your state. I'll call it regulations and processes and procedures. There are certain rules and regulations that are dictated not only by the state but by the federal government that you have to adhere to and follow. Do not try to add just do not try to just do this off the top of your head. This is one of those things that you need to really get in and start working with to understand and practicing a couple times before you actually had someone is not a bad idea. I can tell you that a lot of the research that I've read indicates that this is one of those areas where as a leader or a manager in a high-tech organization, if you really want to find out how good you are, if you want to find out what kind of impact you can have in an organization, sign yourself up to help or be the person that has to let some people go to terminate people because it is a gut-wrenching type of situation. It's not happy for anyone. And the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about uh, the off below my image. It says must terminate pe people because of, and I've got four things that I've identified there for you. Poor behavior, and that is firing somebody. Firing somebody. The lack of budget. Okay, so if we have a lack of budget, and funding, we have to lay people off. Then you have the end of an assignment, a contract person's uh, assignment comes up, somebody finishes an assignment, that's considered a layoff also. And then you've got two other things. You've got a voluntary termination, which is either somebody quits, decides to leave the company, or they possibly retire. I am not going to cover what happens if somebody goes out on medical and then needs to come back or anything like that. That would be a different type of situation. And I will not be covering quitting or firing or quitting or re people retiring. I'm only going to handle the part where we are eliminating people resources on a project or a program. And believe me, this is, like I said, one of the toughest things you will be responsible for doing as a leader or manager in your organization. Any high tech organization is constantly bringing people in, turning that around and trying to find the right mix. Sometimes you have to get rid of people for a variety of reasons. So let's just go ahead and go into the material. I, I just want you to get a, a I'll call it the the best thing to do is understand that once a decision has been made that you must terminate someone. This is something that needs to be done quickly. It's not something you wait till the next quarter. It's not something you say, well, we'll do it next month. We'll do it when it's more appropriate or something like that. This needs to be addressed. And the reason is that if there is a reason that you've decided that you need to terminate someone, then the impact of that and the other people around that whole system of interactions that are happening to the to the people around this person and to that person and to you is going to be in chaotic turmoil so what you need to do is you need to really really look at do i really need to terminate someone there has to be just cause there needs to be a reason that we're going to terminate someone because you need to look at the items that i've got off to the side of the screen you have unemployment costs there are potential opportunity costs there's employee stress there are negative actions that can happen and then you need to take into account the remaining employees 
and then take that puzzle and come back the other way and come down and you need to balance that against employees which are people that are you know already at your company or people that you're hiring versus contractors contract employees because you may be responsible for terminating them you have voluntary versus involuntary terminations that happen you should have some level of internal human resources process it doesn't have to be extremely I'll call it lengthy, but it should at least understand your state. Uh, and I'm in California, so our state has a pretty lengthy, uh, I'll call it, set of procedures that are required that we must follow. The other thing is you need to understand that there's a legal process here also. Lawsuits happen coming out of people terminations. There are a lot of different impacts that can happen. So there's another reason to really really think about is this the right thing to do do we really want to terminate this person and that is because of the human process just what the impact is on people um, not only being terminated but the other people around and i've i've experienced people being terminated around me before i have had to let contract people go i've had to let good regular people go and one of the comments I heard from someone was, if you really want to understand how good you are as a leader, lay somebody off and then see how good you are. Um, and it's not a matter of practicing. It's not a matter of um, the, you know, the, the right words to say. It's a matter of your tone, your temper, your just your position, the way that you're going to handle this. So let's just first talk about what happens when you've got someone that you need to terminate and you pull them in and you're going to have that conversation whatever that conversation is there's a psychology that happens to people once they find out they're going to be terminated so the employee starts asking themselves as the first point here indicates where is my boss going with this there's a confusion uh, that happens initially off the opening remarks you know why why am i being told this i feel like i'm being blindsided you know the it it, it just comes to them as a surprise it doesn't matter who it is this is the series of steps that are going to happen. This is the psychology to, that happens with all of us if we're put in this position. The next thing is the pulling the trigger. The employee is in a state of shock. They're like, really? I'm the one? You know, uh, the other thing is we then move into the state of denial. The employee believes they're either being set up or misunderstood. Well, you don't understand, you know, why did this happen? What was the cause for it? And things like that. And that kind of leads into a level of fighting back. The employee starts to argue to prove to you, the employer, that you're wrong. You shouldn't be terminating me. This is what I've got, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the, the next thing that happens is initially you go through this vengeance piece of it from a psychological standpoint. The first, you know, my first thoughts are, you know, I'm going to get a lawyer and I'm going to sue you. That's just part of that process. Your person is going to go through each one of these stages. It's going to flow through and you need to maintain composure. You need to continue the conversation, but you need to understand that it's going to go all the way through all of these steps. These are the steps that somebody from a psychological standpoint is going to go through when you are going to tell them they are going to be fired um, or terminated, depending on how you want to how you want to phrase it. Uh, the final piece is going to waves of frustration. The employee will calm down and then at a certain point will decide, let's just get the situation over with. OK, so if I'm going to get laid off. Let's just let's do it. What do we need to do? What what do I need to sign? What what needs to happen now? When I said firing is about leadership, there's a couple different categories I'm going to talk about. And we as leaders are responsible for putting the right people in the right place at the right time to get the best out of our people. It optimizes the efficiency and the effectiveness of our employees and the performance of our organizations. So managers and leaders on a constant basis have people that fall into these three categories. And you need to understand if what someone did is a firing or a termination offense because sometimes people do stupid things um, say misfits these are employees who might be the wrong person in the wrong job you know maybe it makes more sense to reconsider a reassignment to another position that's a better fit for that type of person so as a leader and a manager in a high-tech organization it is your responsibility to make sure that your people are in the right positions 
The second one is similar to this. These are poor fits. These are people who don't necessarily screw anything up, but nonetheless, they make the employers unhappy for one reason or another. And it may be poor communication skills. It could be that we've got them doing things that they just are not capable of doing. Uh, and it may, it may contain what we'll call poor functional knowledge in areas that require specific skill sets. You need to determine, is this a person that I need to terminate or fire? Or is this somebody that we can use in another position that's a better fit for them? So misfits and poor fits are people that you need to recognize are going to be coming in front of you and you need to make that determination. Now the third one is screw-ups and these are employees who made mistakes or did something out of ignorance that resulted in an unwanted event. Um, this is when your your hands are tied. You know, you've caught someone on the computer in an area that they weren't supposed to be in. They were, you know, accessing something. They got caught stealing something. They're, these are people that have done something that put you in a position where you simply have no choice they made the wrong decision and something has to be done. So that's a person that must be terminated. So you need to remember that you need to walk through all three of those, I'll call it philosophies. The other thing I want to talk about from a leadership and a management perspective is I want you to reflect on yourself because as a manager and a leader in a high tech organization, you have a responsibility. It is your responsibility to make sure that your people the people resources that are assigned to you are doing what they're supposed to do, that they're held accountable for what they're supposed to do. But at the same time, we need to push that back on ourselves. So as we as leaders run through this checklist, ask yourself these questions, because if any of these check the wrong way, it may not be the other person's fault. It may be a lack of leadership and management that happened on your on your particular situation that prevented them from being able to succeed. So did you communicate your vision clearly? Did I tell you exactly what it was that needed to be done? Did you understand it? Do they see it? Do my employees really understand? Did I give them a mission to accomplish? Did I give my employees the tools to execute this vision? Have they got what they need to actually do this? Did I, as a leader or a manager, coach these employees? Did I sit down and coach them? Did I motivate them? Did I let my employees execute or did I try to micromanage telling them what they needed to do? The other thing, think about this from a perspective of what does my employee think about me? You know, walk through a generic employee and say, what does that employee think about me? What would they say to the answers on this? And then the final thing from a leadership and a management perspective, would be to ask yourself, do I show gratitude for the work being done? When people finish something, do I give them an attaboy? Do I tell them that that's a good job? Thank you very much for what you did. Or am I that distant leader uh, slash manager who expects somebody else to take care of that? So those are leadership uh, reflection points that I want to make sure that you walk yourself through prior to terminating someone. It lets you really get a good sense or feel of am I partly accountable or am I accountable for this person not being able to do what they needed to do. Now, let's go ahead and talk about where we've made the decision that we have to terminate someone. And there's a couple different slides that I want to walk you through and some different points. One, and I think this is probably the most important one, is dignity. Okay? You need to remember that the way you handle this will be seen by not only your employees, but all the other employees that they talk to. So employees will always see what you did and what has happened. So if you try to hide this and terminate someone without anyone knowing about it, I can guarantee you that is not a, a path to success because it'll get out. Somebody will find out. Somebody will know. It isn't like, oh, Bob just didn't come in yesterday and we just know he's never coming back. It doesn't work that way. The other piece of it is humanistic. We're all human beings and there's no need to belittle or humiliate the employee that needs to be terminated. The next piece is going to be, it's your mistake. Often employees don't work out because of what we called before those, those areas that I asked you to go look at. And that is because of misfits, poor fits and screw ups. Okay. So you need to make sure, is this the right person? 
that we need to terminate or is there some other position we need to do with that. The fourth piece is going to be pretend that this was the best employee who ever worked for you. Many times, if you're going to have that conversation with someone that you're terminating them, you have to you have to point out, I'll call it inappropriate behavior. You have to point out poor skill sets and things like that. But look at it from the perspective of this was the best employee you had. And I need to let you go. But at the same time, I need to let you know what you did right, what your good skills are what you're capable of. It's a blended conversation. It isn't like you're just not working out, so we're getting rid of you. Goodbye. That is not the way to terminate someone. You have to follow a certain level of what I refer to as dignity points. And these are the ones I'm talking with you about. Have a decent conversation with your employee, similar to what I just did when I was talking about, hey, don't need you anymore. See ya. Been nice knowing you. Goodbye pick your check up at HR. That's not the kind of conversation you need to have. You need to have a conversation with that employee that shows respect. And then let your employee leave, you know, unnoticed. It's not a production. It's not a show. We don't need to put this on as a, a way to show everyone in the company this is what happens when, you know, I fire you that, you know, we've, we've got some sort of drama and all this kind of stuff. Don't make it a show. It's a process. You onboard people with a process, you have to offboard people with a process also. And then give your employees some reasonable freedom. And I'm going to talk about two different cultures and two different ways I've seen this done. And one was a company that I worked for where we would get told that we were going to have a mass meeting. And the mass meeting, as you were walking into the conference room, there were people that knew who you were and they would pull you into one door or another. One door went into one conference room, the other door went into the other conference room. And we, at times, had mass layoffs. We would get rid of 50 to 100 people at a time. And if you were in one of the conference rooms, it may have been one of those where they needed to let you know you're part of a package of people that are going to be terminated. We're going to be no longer using your services. And there was an explanation in addition to HR representatives that would help from a variety of ways what would happen. And then the other group of us that would be in the other conference room would be told we are in the process of doing a downsizing. We've just had to lay off, say, 20 or 30 people. They're in the other conference room. They would explain exactly what happened. This was a very uncomfortable thing from a from an employee's perspective to be in. But I'm always glad I was on the conference room side that was staying. I was never on the other side. Um, that was one company I worked at. And then there's another company where we used to get what we call the pat, uh, like the tap on the on the shoulder. And you would, they, out of nowhere, you would get a tap on the shoulder and you would be asked, can you follow me? Can you come with me? And you would follow them and you would end up going, you would go into either your office or an office and sit down and they would explain to you, you're going to be terminated. This is what's happening. You have 20 minutes. And they did actually do it in a 20 minute window. You have 20 minutes to go back to your office or your cubicle or the location that you work at. You can pack up and remove your personal goods and I need you to leave today. Um, and and it's, it's just brutal to watch it happen because everyone around would see this person come in, pack their stuff up. They didn't get a chance to talk to anyone. You know, give your employees some reasonable freedom unless, unless you are concerned that there's going to be a major problem associated with that. Them letting people know I've been laid off or I've been terminated and it was done in a very respectful way goes miles towards trying to keep the culture intact in a positive way. The other thing is from a legal standpoint, you do not want to put yourself into a position where you have legal implications because of the way you terminated someone. So from a legal perspective, make sure when you are having that conversation, when I'm talking to you to let you know that we're going to be terminating you, what I need you to understand is you must make them understand why they're being terminated. You can't just say, we're getting rid of you. I can't really tell you why or anything like that. You need to tell them what skill they didn't have, what performance was not there that you needed from them, what it was they did wrong if there was some sort of an infraction. 
you, they have to understand the why they are being terminated. If you do not provide that, you are setting yourself up for legal implications. The other thing is you need to say less. The more you talk, the more you have a chance of saying something that can come back and be used against you when you're taken to court. So make sure that the conversation you are having with them is specific. We talk about exactly what is necessary. That's, that's it. You don't want to elaborate. You don't want to go in and talk about other people and other things. Don't do that. Saying less is going to be better for you in the long run right now. The next thing is you need to be fair. U.S. law requires equal treatment of employees, especially ones working in the same position. So if there are multiple people that are doing the same job and you've selected one to get rid of, you need to make sure you understand why you're getting rid of that one specific person who out of a portfolio or out of a group of four or five was you know, pulled away. So those are things you need to understand. Be fair and then question your own actions. By that I mean for every action you perform, think whether someone may find it to be discriminating. So when we're terminating someone, is there something that you say that could potentially lead to someone saying I was discriminated against? You know, did they do something? Be careful of that. Question your own actions. This is how we're going to terminate someone. We want to make sure we have that conversation. We want to make sure that we transition them from being inside the company to being outside the company. And we want that at that point. The thing you want to understand is prevent further contact. Do not get on the phone and talk to this person on a regular basis. Don't go out and have lunch with this person every week. Don't go and share private or confidential information about the company if you are around this person or other people. You need to understand the impact of what you're trying to say. Now, when we're having that conversation, we've kind of gone through the process of it from a philosophy standpoint, from a what not to do. So let's talk about having the conversation. Try to keep it short. The longer you talk, the harder it is for not only the employee to listen, but for you to say something you might regret later. Keep good eye contact. Always look the person in the eyes. Make sure you maintain good eye contact. It shows a sign of respect. If you don't do it, they will, they will recognize it. And you'll hear things like, somebody said you wouldn't even look me in the eyes. They let me go. From a leader and manager's perspective, you need to show confidence. This is probably, like I said, one of the hardest things you will ever have to do as a leader and a manager in a high-performing company or in a high-tech high, high tech environment. But show confidence. The other thing would be bring the appropriate personnel. Don't bring a gang of 15 or 20 people in to lay somebody off. But make sure you've got the right people there if necessary. If you have to have someone from HR there along with someone from the person's organization, along with you, make sure everyone is there and that you're all prepared. The final thing would be make sure you always have a witness. There should always be someone else there with you that helps you and the, the process from a perspective of being a witness as to what happened. There's a lot of research out there right now, and it's kind of strange, but it says that the best time to terminate a person, and I know that sounds crazy, but there is a particular time and a particular day. So the best day of the week to terminate someone is going to be on a Friday. The best time to do it is going to be after lunch in the early to mid afternoon. Statistics show that that is the best time for it to happen. There's less impact on the organization. You do not, under any circumstances, want to lay someone off on a Monday morning, right at the beginning of the work week. So remember that. Statistics, statistics show and studies show that that's when you want to terminate an employee if you can. And then you need to pick the right place. So not only do you have to pick the right time, you have to pick the right place. And a lot of people will come back and tell you, you don't have to pull them into a conference room. You could have that conversation outside at a bench. You could have that conversation outside at a picnic table. You could have it in a conference room away from other people. 
Think about the location that you want to do it in. It doesn't have to be a small crammed office where as soon as people walk in, they go, oh, I know what's coming now. Um, so just keep that in mind, okay? So when you're having that firing conversation. Now, now that we've got it done, we've got the aftermath. Okay, so somebody's been terminated. Now what do we do? Don't keep it a secret. You need to clarify for all your pers for all your employees, you know, that someone was terminated. So and so was terminated. We had to let them go. This is why. Reduce the gossip. The less your employees know, the more gossip they will spread. Let your people know what has happened. Some some people will believe gossip no matter what. So you need to make sure that you really really eliminate this. Educate your employees. Explain to the remaining employees about your expectations. In addition to that, let them know that you're in control and if you tell the truth and are honest, everything's going to be fine. We're working in this, this I'll call it this bubble of trust. Um, and as you show that you're in control of the process and that this wasn't just something that happened for no reason at all, your employees will respect you for it. Listen to your employees also. If the wrong message gets to your employees, it may destroy your culture. So make sure that if you're going to have a layoff or if you've just had a layoff, listen to what people are saying. Understand what they believe. Um, and it may take another meeting for you to clarify that. And then the final thing would be don't dismiss anything you hear. Once you hear something that bothers you, you need to act immediately. So if you hear repercussions, you hear things that are happening, make sure you let people know as quickly as possible. Now, we're going to talk about exit interviews and this is really tricky because a lot of times the only people that want to have exit interviews are going to be people that are retiring or people that are leaving on their own. That's the opportunity where you can make that happen. Um, but if someone is willing to conduct an exit interview with you, then what you need to do is you need to follow a series of certain things. One, there's tremendous information you can get about the organization. The people what's happening, the processes, uh, areas that may have, you know, areas for competing resources, things like that. Conduct exit interviews if possible. Exit interviews should not be, uh, I'll call it interrogations. They should feel warm. It should be a conversation. You need to thank the employee for everything they've done. Anyone you get a chance to do this with, you want to make sure you have that exit interview, that meeting with them. Make the questions that you're going to ask them as precise as possible. You can't ask them questions that are open-ended and expect them to fill in what you're looking for. Be specific about, did we give you the tools necessary to complete your task? Yes, no, and if no, what what tools would have been required? What tools could have changed this? How could we have? That's the type of questioning you need to do. And remember when I say questioning, it is not an interrogation. It is a conversation. You should also listen and document everything that is said. Like I said, it is very good information for you. Now that covers the basics for terminating people. What I wanna do is I wanna walk you through a quick quiz but at the same time, I need you to understand these questions when I ask them are meant to either be yes, no. You're going to look at these and you're going to say sometimes it's situational, sometimes it's maybe. Remember those are responses also or it depends. Okay, so question one. First question, when terminating an employee, should I lie to make them feel better about the situation? Question two. Can I rehire someone after I have fired them? Question three, is it my responsibility to find a job for someone I am terminating? Question four, should I not hire or should I not fire a veteran that is not performing and has been identified for termination? Question five, if someone starts yelling during a termination, should I call security or yell back at them? And then the final question I've got for you is question six. Should we terminate someone on a Monday morning? Now, all of these questions 
I know you've got answers for. Walk them through your head from a philosophical standpoint. I want you to go back and look at the leadership questions that I provided you in here and make sure you write down exactly what you think your responses to that would be. I'll say this from the experience that I have. Hiring people is a wonderful experience. Interviewing them, motivating people is a wonderful experience. Rewards and recognition programs, celebrations are wonderful experiences. Working with high-performing teams and watching them succeed are wonderful experiences. There is one thing that you must do as a manager and a leader in a high technology organization that doesn't fall into those categories and it's terminating people or firing people. And it is a painful process, not only for you, but for the employee. Make sure you follow a good set of process rules. Be, be dignified. Remember that it's a human being on the other side and that you follow exactly what you've set up as the plan for getting the person in and out as quickly and as effectively as possible. But have the conversation in a respectful way. And if you do that, you're going to find that you will grow as a leader and manager into a very powerful, I'll call it the experience will make you stronger. It'll humble you. It'll make you feel bad to the point where you'll go, boy, the next time I get put in a position like this, how do I improve what I did? Those are the things you need to think about. Have a great week. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.